All right, uh, welcome to Gateway API meeting for December 6. We are recording and we've got lots to get through today. Uh, let me start off uh, just with a final follow-up on GEP 735. Uh, huge thanks to Shane for uh, following through on this one. And I, I think we are awfully close to the finish line on this. I, it, this is again about uh, basically address matching, source and destination address matching for TCP and UDP route. Uh, Shane, I wanna make sure I got this right. I know you had just recently pushed an update for proxy protocol. If I'm remembering correctly, you basically said that proxy protocol is not considered uh, for address matching, is that correct? Harry convinced me to go the other way. Okay must be considered. Okay. It, it, his suggestion was that it may become difficult to go the other way, um, more so than to, like basically to start without it and to get to it would be more difficult than to remove it if we felt we needed to at some point in a later iteration. Got it, okay, I can see that. All that really ends up being is documentation, but basically just implementers need to know you must respect yeah. pro pro the, the, the connection metadata. Yeah, that makes sense. That okay, was the only then, thing in here that I felt was these suggestions that are a little bit hard to like, I have a couple of comments out for, so maybe we can talk about some of those. I don't know if we should do that right now or not. Yeah, uh, I think that'd be good. I know there's this other thread. Uh, it's come up in two different places. There's one discussion of name address here, like implementation specific. And then there's a longer thread. I can't remember which one of us that, started. It's that one. But... You just passed okay. over it. Um, okay. There was so a the this... longer thread. Oh, yeah, there's this one too. Yeah, so there's this longer one about named address. And I think, Harry, this is waiting for a follow-up from you on this one. But it, it's really just uh, trying to see if, if named address is a blocker right now or if it's acceptable enough to just kind of move forward with uh, oh, I, I didn't realize that i was tagged here sorry i lost I lost yeah it's fine yeah so yeah i mean i'm fine with it it's just pretty unusable in my opinion without a prefix okay. named address will mean it's something different for everybody so that's also fine like if you know implementer like it's a bit it, it the user experience could be better but i certainly don't want to block this pr on that it's a bigger much bigger issue yeah, I would also yeah. throw out like I, I get where you're coming from, but I would also throw out like we still got a little bit of time if this merges, it's still provisional. So like I, I would definitely I know Howard John's got something he's planning to add the port stuff for this like right away potentially, or at least he he mentioned doing so. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's set in stone if we do that, even if we merge. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think Harry, I also agree with what you're saying that you know named address as a as a type is is rather imprecise because it does mean something different for every implementation. But I I also think it's almost a little too late to fix that mistake because we we've already shipped named address with gateway, and so if you have two different ways to represent a named address, then it, you know whatever. I might, but, but I, I or go ahead. I'm sorry. I might take a slightly different. I, my my thinking goes in a slightly different direction than what you said, Rob. Not okay. that we should probably fix holistically rather than like try to do it in microcosms. Like this is one place where we could, we are already using it. Maybe we need to, before we go to beta say, okay, we're using this in two different places. Does it still make sense? Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I personally am fine with like, this is not, it's increasing like not a good API, the usage of not a good API, but then the scope yeah. of this PR is not to fix that. Maybe you should have an issue if anybody is interested with tracks fixing this in a future release by deprecating named address, if, if that makes sense at all. But otherwise, yeah, this PR is fine in this regard. That's, that's a good idea because I, I did like what Nick had proposed uh, further down of kind of the vendor prefixed value for yeah i like i like this. nick's idea as well okay oh, so sure. sorry i just <laughs> perfect well well maybe what we should do then is is 
merge this like as as we've already said it's provisional i think we all agree with 99 percent of the content in here uh and then create a follow-up issue to track an alternative way to represent named address both here and on gateway itself because i think gateway the resource because i i think there is room for something like better like a vendor prefixed name there um, yeah i like that approach because the, it basically looks at it holistically, so we don't have like two different implementations. Yeah. And yeah. the reason that is more important is the vendors who will be supplying named addresses and the gateway API implementers in some cases will be different. That's, yeah, that, that's a good point. I hadn't really thought about, uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking very, I'm biased towards a perspective where they're one and the same, the implementer and the provider of the named address, but obviously that's not always going to be the case. Um, yeah, very good distinction there. Cool. Okay. Uh, Shane, do you want to create that follow up issue? Sure. Cool. Awesome. And uh, I'll I'll make sure to go through this one more time. I know there's already one LGTM on this, so maybe we just need an approve. Did I, or no, the LGTM got wiped out, but I think there has been at least one LGTM on this. Um, yeah, this is good for from me. Okay. Yeah. So sorry, I missed the, what did we end up deciding about the proxy protocol? I went with Harry's, Harry convinced me we should just add it as a must upfront rather than try okay, to do it sure. later. Sure, that's fine with me too. Cool. All right. Uh, well, it sounds like uh, this one's about good to go here. So uh, I'll make sure to, to run through it and add an LGTM or approve. And if someone else can do that as well, uh, that'll be great. And I think Shane, you're, you're following a file up issue, a follow up issue for this one. Uh, yep. Cool. Great. Thanks. Uh, next one to cover is a conformance update. This is a relatively small thing. But I just wanted, I'd, I'd put in a fair amount of time working on conformance tests, but I didn't even have enough to, I didn't feel comfortable doing a work in progress PR for this yet, but I just wanted to share an update of my general thoughts. Uh, one of the things that I've worked on is, is this kind of uh, base uh, set of basically an environment that conformance tests can run in. I think right now it con contains three gateways, uh, three namespaces, a variety of, back, I think, the same number of backend services, deployments, et cetera. They're all using serve host names, so it's relatively easy when you make a request to see where it ended up. Uh, a variety of things like that that I think will provide a fairly uh, straightforward way to test. So basically, you can just add a single resource to this space. So you say, I want to add a route and attach it to this specific gateway, and I'm adding this route and this pre-created namespace. So you're, you're making relatively minimal changes as you go. And this also seems to seems like it will play well into uh, what we discussed in the gap itself of uh, uh, implementations that may need or want to basically pre-deploy uh, managed gateways uh, kind of thing. Uh, so I, I think this approach will be relatively workable. Uh, but I just I just wanted to share that the general idea and thought process that I'm starting with here. Uh, there's nothing too interesting in this in the set of manifests. Just again, kind of starting point. Uh, you know, uh, I, the other thing that I've been working towards, and again, I don't know how achievable this will be, but it's certainly been a goal of mine. Is that as much as I want this to be exposed as a CLI, I also would love to get this to a place where you can import these tests and kind of integrate them with your own test suite. Uh, that includes, you know, maybe some kind of HTTP request interface. If you're if if you're working in a different environment where that doesn't necessarily make sense, or where the vanilla net HTTP requests aren't going to make sense, you want to override some part of that. Uh, Anyway, these are these are all just fairly high level ideas right now. I just I really do hope to get a PR out this week. Uh, but yeah, the, these are my high level thoughts. What I've been working on for conformance, and 
yeah, if, if you have ideas, if you have suggestions on more details, more, more ideas on how to structure this, or, you know, requests for how this could better integrate with workflows, you know, whatever, um, that's, that's the update right now, but hopefully more to say next week. The, any, any questions or comments on conformance before I move on? Um, it looks good to me. Uh, have you considered using one of the echo server things instead of server host name? So you get all the headers and all that sort of stuff as well. That will let us test. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did the headers, yeah, if a header adding. Did yeah, issue. that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Let me, let me work on a better base image than just server host name. That's a good point. Um, cool. All right, uh, the next thing I wanted to cover is, well, actually, I don't, Jeff, I don't think you're on this call. Uh, so I don't think there's much to say on route inclusion delegation. I know he's been working on this doc and proposal. Uh, there, there is more here now, but I don't see him on the call. So we'll just leave this for next week. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, next up is PR and issue triage in no particular order. Uh, one of the ones I wanted to get to, I, I think uh, John had, had raised this idea. I don't, I also don't see him on the call right now, uh, but that's fine. I, I'm at least familiar with the idea here. Uh, so John had proposed adding port matching and routes. This is really a follow-up. I think this issue, yeah, this issue refers to uh, GAP 735, which originally included port matching, but was you know left out because it was confusing for good reason. Uh, but this kind of separates that out and tries to explore port matching on its own and its you know usefulness or not. Uh, there, I think there are really two use cases for port matching, and what we are focused on with GAP 735 is potential use case for ingress. And it got to be pretty confusing, you know, the overlap between port matching on route versus port matching in gateway. Uh, John, you know, understandably is coming at this from a mesh perspective. Uh, and so he's looking, you know, so, you know, basically the idea is, uh, as I understand their implementation, they are using parent ref to attach a route to a mesh, right? And so if you attach a route to a mesh, uh, you could also basically say, I want to attach to this mesh on port 80, which is not that different from saying, I want to attach to this gateway on port 80 or 443. It's uh, a little weird, but it, it does seem at least workable. Um, so this, this is a proposal or feature request. Yeah, feature request from John. Uh, he had specified or you know, suggested a few different options. One, adding it to just the match itself on each route type. Uh, the other, you know, that that is what we explored in 735 and I think ended up going away from. Uh, the other one was uh, section name, you know, you could reuse section name to be, you know, uh, a reference of a port with just use a string as a port and it, it kind of works, but it's kind of gross. And then the final idea is, could we just add a port field to parent ref? And this is, I want to attach to this port on my parent, yeah, on my parent resource. Um, that feels like it is generally applicable, roughly applicable to both use cases. It seems primarily useful for mesh, but at least understandable for ingress. Um, but I'm interested in what others are thinking here. I think he, I, I agree that it makes sense that the port, the third one kind of makes sense, but it, it would be a little funky with a uh, route, with route to route inclusion with Jess proposal basically. What is the what is the port field on a parent ref that points to a route main? Um, I mean, we can just say it doesn't mean anything; it'll be ignored. But you, know, which is probably fine. Um, it's probably not enough of a reason, but that's the only other thing I can think of that would be a problem. 
Yeah, and I think right now, well, I think section name uh, on parent route re references to parent routes is also undefined. Like I don't think we have a route rule name. Uh, we may we may need that. We probably will need that for route inclusion. Uh, so you can at least see where section name could be useful for route to route references. Uh, I, I agree, it, it would have to be undefined or invalid if it was part of a parent ref to a, to a route. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that should definitely be part of both of these proposals. Is define if we're going to add that new field, we just got to think about it and define it and say what's yeah. algorithm is. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine for things for things to say, especially if the field is optional, which this would be. That you know, when this refers to uh, X, it, it must be ignored. Yeah, I I guess that's really something that uh, even webhook validation could could solve. Uh, you know, well, not solve, but it could mitigate. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Does, that, does anyone have any, you know, strong feelings one way or another if this is something like we should, you know, explore further? Uh, hi, Rob. Rahul here. Uh, hey. Hey, uh, so this is my first time here uh, to this meeting. Um, one, I mean, my preference is, of course, the first idea here. It seems like the simplest. Uh, having abstraction levels with section names or uh, other references seems more complicated for the more, for a lot of the mesh use cases. But uh, especially given that this is probably be an optional field. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I think that's um, most similar to what we'd originally described in 735. Shane, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's kind of where it would, Basically, what you'd added in in here was uh, port matching on NTCP route, UDP route, et cetera, right? Say it one more time. Uh, you so sorry. Uh, the original, like way back in the day, the original GEP seven thirty five included port matching, and that port matching was on like inside the match of TCP route and UDP route, right? Or maybe I'm going too, too far back in time. I don't know. Uh, in any case, I think that this, yeah. this is a place to have the discussion. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we're okay. going to wrap this one up and move on to the other one. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I I shouldn't shouldn't dig too far into this. I, I you know, I I agree that if you're, you know, from from a, a mesh perspective, including including this directly in the match is is great. Uh, but then I I think where we got stuck, and and this is me just trying to remember which could be wrong, but I think where we got stuck on this is that uh, it it be, it became a field that either didn't have a meaning for ingress or had a confusing meeting for ingress. Uh, and, and both of those were unfortunate. Um, but may, maybe, there's, maybe there's a path forward here. Um, yeah, yeah, thank, thanks for the feedback, Rahul. Um, we, should, we should really just, I think, continue the discussion on this issue uh, for, for the next little bit. Uh, if you have any thoughts or feedback, on this idea, and I, I do want to move on from this, I think, but uh, it's it's good to get that feedback and to get the preference here uh, for, yeah. Okay, any any last comments before I move on? Yeah, I would just say I'd love to hear I'd love to hear more of uh, use cases and stuff like that on this issue. So sorry, whoever else can go. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I need to think a little more. This it can be opening a can of worms, so just need to think more and then probably comment on the issue. Okay. I gotta send you that can open, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. 
Uh, I just noticed in chat, I'm just uh, catching up in chat. There's a question from Lewin about uh, what happens if it is not specified for a mesh use case. Uh, that's a good question. I think that would have to depend on mesh implementations right now. The And and I, I think Istio is the, the main one I'm aware of, as well as I think uh, Traffic Director is working on something like here. Uh, but I, I'm, I don't know. Uh, Mesh is, is re relatively underspecified right now in the API, so I'm not sure what that would mean. Uh, it, I, my guess is that it means listen on, on all ports, but again, I'm not sure. Um, and then Rahul, you're saying you cannot match a lot of TCP traffic for Mesh, uh, so MySQL traffic, etc. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and feel free to add comments here or if you want to add any additional discussion, we've got a, a couple minutes, uh, otherwise I can move on. I'm, I'm really sorry. My whole internet dropped out right when you were asking me questions. Everybody <laughs> went robot and then I had nothing. My apologies. Got it. And I, I figured as much. Uh, I For a second, I saw you were unmuted and thought, oh, maybe he's just thinking for a second. And then, yeah, I figured when it went that long. Yeah. Well, glad to have you back. Uh, I think we've got enough here. Uh, to and and basically the the, fault, the the action I'm from this is just continue the discussion in here. I think this requires some more thought, and I think it might have been Harry that mentioned that this is uh, a can you know opening a can of worms. Uh, so hopefully we can. Hopefully it's not okay. too big of a, a can, but yeah. Cool. All right, uh, let's keep on moving then. Uh, this one's a smaller one, Steve. I don't see you on the call, but I chatted, I chatted with Steve a bit this morning about uh, generated types. Uh, I introduced this bug uh, when I moved everything into experimental and uh, stable CRDs. I changed the CRD generation, everything. Uh, part of that meant that somehow I lost deep copy generation. I think that's a relatively easy thing to fix. Um, it looks like Steve has volunteered to uh, look into this more. There's a deep copy gen that is probably all we need here. But anyway, uh, Steve is looking at this one. If anyone is super familiar though uh, and wants to help out, always welcome. Uh, the next one, or sorry, go ahead. I think Nick, you're about to I was to just gonna say, yeah, I'm really glad. I'm really glad Steve picked that one up. He's- uh... Yes. Because yeah, he's 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 looking at fixing up that other thing, the wildcard post name thing. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And actually, that's uh, let, let me just uh, jump right into this one then, because that is also where this came from, uh, the wildcard host name thing. This seems like a really uh, sensible change. Uh, Steve is running into some trouble with uh, CLA verification. I don't know what's going on there, but the actual PR to me seems reasonable. Uh, James, no, James is not on this call, but I, I still have a strong preference towards these types, these custom types that we're using everywhere, as opposed to a string. But I don't know, I'm also not implementing this API. So for someone who's actually implementing this API, are all these custom type names just a pain to work with? I, you know, I haven't heard anything, like I haven't been doing the PRs for Contour, but uh, I know that Steve, uh, Chris, and Steve Sloka have been doing them, uh, and yeah, no, neither of them have been complaining about it at all. Uh, I feel like the big advantage it gives us having to be typed is that is that it lets gives you two advantages. The um, the type itself holds the CRD validation, so there's only one place where you need to set the validation string for this for the for the type, uh, and then you also get the type safety uh, that you know, yeah. can go type safety when you do that. That's, in my mind, those are the two reasons to do it uh, and rather than using strings. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I, th I think it's it's highly worthwhile. Uh, I'll, I'll add a comment to that effect. Um, the, the actual PR itself seems pretty straightforward. I, I'm not sure where this falls in our release pattern. I, we, we've left room open in our versioning guidelines to basically release bug fixes uh, to our validation, I would 
I would consider it a bug. Like I, I can't imagine anyone intentionally trying to use a wild card in a re, like a redirect to a wild card value that it just doesn't seem valid. Uh, so I, I think this is a, this is a valid change uh, to me. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'd All be, right. I'd be uh, to hear from others as well uh, about. I mean, I can't think of any reason to do it, uh, but yeah, yeah. I'll be interested to see everyone else's reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the very last thing on the agenda today is uh, Chris. I think this is your PR. Uh, I noticed you had updated it just before this meeting, and I hadn't got a chance yeah. to take a look. Uh, yeah. What What do you need from us on this? So uh, right now, I think I didn't commit the uh, goes on, so that's why it's breaking, but I'm not sure that you commit that. And what I did was I kind of moved around the tests. So that test that uh, the backend ref uh, test and the other tests I just uh, made one because they were testing the, the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just moving things around a little bit. Okay. And you still have, okay, I see. And so this cleans up, it looks like it cleans up a good chunk of the code. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it puts uh, it puts the logic in this validator round spec. Okay. That way we can range over the, over the rules. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me take another look at this. I know I'm not the only one who's been reviewing this, but uh, yeah, thank you again for, for taking this one on. Um, yep, no cool. problem. All right, so this just needs another round of review, it, look, it sounds like, and it's otherwise pretty close. Cool. All right, well, that's. Uh, I think that's all we have on the agenda today. If I missed any issues or PRs, let me know. We, could, we have time to cover them. Otherwise, uh, we probably have some time we can get back. Sounds good to me. All right. Have a great one. Thanks, everyone. See you. Thanks, everyone. See you. Bye.